jump into mysterious and possibly supernatural cases. Join William Carter as you seek to unravel the truth in Unsolved Mysteries and Encora de Fuego. Welcome to Tantrum House Studio D, I'm Kevin Delp. Unsolved Mysteries is a one to two player story mystery game by Arcady Designs. One player, of course, you're working by yourself. With two players, you're working together in this game. There are several chapters in the game. We just played the prologue, so we're not gonna really spoil anything about the main parts of the game. We'll just go over the gameplay, but let's first look at those components. There's an adventure book, board, cards, standees, dice, and tokens. Setup will be different depending on the story you choose, but you'll place out the cards in the different room tiles on the board. We'll be using the prologue for examples in this video, and we'll look at the co-op mode for two players. Players get their standees and their tokens. Each round, you'll roll Kami dice, interact, maybe face some yokai, and then move your character. One player will roll six dice, keep any results they want, and re-roll. But if you rolled any dice with this symbol, those dice become frozen and cannot be re-rolled. You can roll your dice a total of three times. Count the number of dice that are frozen and check the card to see if you face any yokai and take the appropriate card or cards. Then you can interact. As you were rolling, you were looking at the cards in your room, trying to match the symbols on the card. You can only choose one interaction on the card based on your dice result. Once you choose the number, you locate that number in the adventure book and read the story. Usually you'll have to do something or maybe you'll gain something to help you in the game. After you finish your interaction, then you face any yokai that are in front of you. You roll the dice and based on your roll, you may lose some life tokens and hopefully defeat the yokai by rolling the symbols it wants. If you survive, then you can move. If one of your dice results matches your altar icon. Then the other player gets to take a turn. Players will be moving from room to room, interacting with people or things, trying to find out what the answers are. In the prologue, we were trying to escape the asylum, so we needed things like keys to unlock doors and other things to help us out. You don't really know which number to choose from on the cards, sometimes you're forced to choose a certain one based on your dice rolls. Some of the interactions will progress the story, but not give you any items. There are different endings to the game. I don't want to spoil anything, but depending on the path you choose, you'll definitely see and experience different things while you play. You do have to move around from room to room in order to accomplish your mission. So this can sometimes take a few extra turns if you're trying to go to a room farther away. As I was playing uh, Unsolved Mysteries, a couple other games sort of came to mind that had some similarities. One is Mansions of Madness, um, as you're sort of like unveiling and revealing what the mystery is in the game. Another one is Elder Sign. Uh, Elder Sign, you're rolling dice and trying to match those dice to the cards. And there's a little bit of that same mechanic in this game. And the other one is Near and Far from Red Raven Games. You know, there's that story element in the game. And Unsolved Mysteries also has a story. The difference is in Near and Far, um, you get to hear the story and, you know, someone reads it for you and then you make your choice based off of the story, that paragraph you just read. Um, that's different in Unsolved Mysteries because you are going to be taking these actions and rolling dice and, and basically saying, I want to choose this action um, and this number, and then you go find out in the storybook sort of what's happening in the story. We're working with a prototype, but there's still a lot of work to do with the English. It took us out of the story a few times trying to figure out what it was supposed to say instead of what was actually written. I think that will be something very important to get the English correct since this game relies heavily on the story. I talked to the company and they are hiring someone to translate it into English. It's cool that this can be played solo or co-op with two players with the different characters in the game. Uh, there's a little bit of different rules depending on the player count. Furukawa and Romiko have a sun side and a nightmare side. The monsters have all the needed information on the card. How many rolls you can take, what you get if defeating it, and more. The art and the illustrations fit fine with the story and the theme. 
Once again, everything that you saw was a prototype, and we were just looking at the prologue, so if you're interested in jumping into the mystery from Arcadia Designs, then check out their Kickstarter for Unsolved Mysteries, and we'd love for you to subscribe to Tantrum House.